Welcome to the training module on digital PFC controllers. This training module will introduce basic knowledge of PFC and Cyrus Logic digital PFC solution. Traditionally, power factor is defined as the phase difference or displacement angle between sinusoidal voltage and current waveforms created by linear AC loads. But it is only valid when there is an ideal sinusoidal signal for both current and voltage waveform. But in practice, most offline power supplies draw a non-sinusoidal current. Switch mode power supplies are a good example. It conducts current in a short pulse that is in phase that are in phase with the line voltage but is not a pure sine wave creating linear harmonics. These harmonic currents do not contribute to the low power. Energy star for external supply defines true power factor as the ratio of the active or real power consumed in watts to the apparent power drawn in volt amperes. Power factor affects the efficiency of a power system. Power factor correction, PFC, is a feature designed into the pulse width modulation controller to help regulate, stabilize, and provide the requirements for a higher low current an instantaneous current. The ideal objective for PFC is to make the low circuitry power factor correct and the apparent power equal to the real power. There are two types of PFC, active PFC and passive PFC. An active PFC uses an effective power electronic circuit that controls the amount of power drawn by a load in order to sustain a power factor as close as possible to unity, while a passive PFC uses a capacitive filter at the AC input to correct poor power factor. Cyrus Logic is introducing power factor correction techniques for a switch mode power converter using PWM controller logarithm. The digital power factor correction circuit eases the difficulty in obtaining the required efficiencies at light loads and the absence of load, allowing the power supply designer to sustain the active PFC stage across all load conditions, thereby simplifying the design of the second stage. To align the two input waveforms shape and phase, switching is carried out using the digital techniques. The switch is controlled by the calculated duty cycle to achieve unity power factor. The system has an analog to digital converter to sample the output voltage, a computational unit to determine the value of the switch duty ratio, and a digital pulse width modulator that outputs a pulsating waveform that controls the switch in the converter at the consumption at the computer duty ratio. As shown in the comparison graph, a digital PFC device is able to maintain a consistently high efficiency, well above 90% efficiency, even at low current power levels, whereas the efficiency of a traditional analog approach drops dramatically at lower low ranges. This not only allows the digital PFC device to meet increasingly tighter regulatory demands, it also enables designers to deploy a common solution across a wide range of product and product families. The CS1500 and CS1600 are able to intelligently solve increasingly complex power management challenges. Through its digital noise shaping technology, both the CS1500 and CS1600 enable reduced size EMI filters, 
which cut the need for additional high-priced components and circuitry. The CS1500 and CS1600 are digitally controlled, discontinuous condition mode, active power factor correction ICs intended for use in power supplies rated up to 300 watts. The CS1500 is designed to address power supplies such as laptop adapter adapters, digital TVs, and PC power, while the CS1600 targets electronic lighting ballast. The CS1500 slash CS1600 PFC is based on EXL core. It operates in variable on time, variable frequency, discontinuous conduction. The analog to digital converter shown in the block diagram is used to sense the PFC output voltage and the rectified AC line voltage by measuring currents through their respective resistors. The magnitude of these currents are measured as a proportion of the reference current that function as the reference for the A to D. The digital signal is then processed in the control logarithm which determines the behavior of the CS1500 slash CS1600 during startup, normal operation, and under fault conditions. Examples are brownouts, over voltage, over current, over power, and over temperature conditions. The CS1500 slash CS1600 uses a proprietary digital control logarithm to shape conducted EMI emissions, resulting in significantly reduced EMI filter requirements. The CS1500 slash CX1600 has two discrete modes of operations startup and normal. Startup mode will be activated when VN is less than 90% of nominal value and remains active until VN reaches 100% of nominal value. During this startup phase of operation, the switching frequency could be significantly lower than the normal operating frequency and the input current waveform is forced into following a trapezoidal envelope in phase with the line voltage to maximize energy transfer. Once VN reaches its nominal value, the chip operates in the normal mode. Burst mode is utilized to improve system efficiency when the system output power is less than 5% of nominal. The CS1500 slash CS1600 has a few protection features including over voltage, over power, open and short circuit protection, over temperature, and brownout to help protect the device during abnormal transient conditions. Here's an example for a front-end PFC stage designed for an electronic ballast application. The CS1600 continuously monitors the rectified AC line and the PFC output voltage through sense resistors tied to the current AC and the uh, FB pins to monitor the voltage scales and current. The rectified AC line sense resistor needs to be the same size as the, re the resistor RFB used to current feedback from the PFC output stage. To achieve unity power factor, a uh, DCM PFC circuit needs an input filtering circuit to bypass the high frequency current so that the input current consists of a low frequency proportion only. The gate driver output is able to drive the power MOSFET with a peak current of 0.5 amps source and a 1 amp sink.